Under the skin. What? <laughs> Easy Riders and welcome to the Film Book Club Review Show. Today we're talking about Under the Skin from 2013, directed by Jonathan Glazer and starring Scarlett Johansson. The film is about a mysterious woman who seduces lonely men in the evening to early hours of Scotland, predominantly in Glasgow from her white van. A series of events then continue to send her on a voyage of self-discovery of human emotion. Okay, I don't know where to begin. I saw this film two days ago and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since I first saw it. I think we need to say straight away that cinema lovers will absolutely be in awe of this film. I think the majority of you out there will be as well. It's definitely not for everyone. There will be a good portion of cinema fans who won't have a clue what's going on because they'll just disregard it as being arty-farty cinema, essentially. But it is so much more. This is certainly the closest thing we have come to anything from 2001, A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick. There's even elements of The Man Who Fell to Earth featuring David Bowie in there, the Nicholas Rogue film. The cinematography by Daniel Landon is sublime. There is so much going on. The score, the best use of score I've seen in a film since whenever. Mika Levi, who's done the score for the film, is absolutely phenomenal. I just need to talk about Scarlett Johansson in this film. It's her best performance, in my opinion, since Lost in Translation, and it's a very different kind of performance, but she doesn't really do much in terms of, certainly, dialogue. There's, there's not actually major lines of dialogue spoken until about 13 minutes into the film, but what she can do with just a look, she says it all just through her visual performance. She is very much an alien in our world and she's coming to comprehend and understand the ways of human emotion and how humans interact with each other. I could ramble on about the plot and the narrative for hours, but I'm not going to do that because I think that you all need to go and see this film and judge it for yourself. The film lasts for just over an hour and 40 and there wasn't a dull moment in it. I was on the edge of my seat for the entirety of the film. It's just scene after scene, it's just bombardment of visual, audio, just delights all around. There's a lot of real footage used in the film as well. There's scenes where Scarlett Johansson's character, who is nameless throughout the film, so we'll just call her Scarlett for ease, where she's picking up men in Glasgow, and these are real, like, real people from the streets, they're not actors. And there's a real naturalism, honestly, because they don't know they're being filmed. There was hidden cameras put inside the van where she was doing it, and they had to sign release forms later to give the permission to be involved in the performance. So there's obviously a real naturalism there, and it's, it's great to hear real Scottish accents as well, none of this fake stuff that, you know, Hollywood's been leaking in over the last couple of years with certain films. There's a few sequences throughout the course of the film where she lures these different men back to her home, and the sequence which takes place during the seduction process is unbelievable. It's very theatrical. There's a scene where she's walking backwards and the men walk towards her, and that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm not going to go into great detail, but I don't know as a viewer how they did it. It's certainly not CG, it's a practical effect, but the way that that scene unfolds throughout the course of the film, and then the audio soundtrack which goes along with it, it's very seductive, it's very chilling, it's creepy. It's a sci-fi film, but you could definitely put it in the horror bracket. As she goes on her discovery, you know, to, to try and become more human, there's certain events which unfold as well, and there's scenes which take place in a woods later on, which is extremely disturbing. Perhaps the most distressing scene of the entire film is a scene on a beach, which happens quite early on. That was Goosebumps Central. You know, I've never actually seen a film in recent times as visually stimulating as this. And I think it's absolutely vital that you all go and watch it. If you're a lover of cinema, go and check it out. If you're a fan of Kubrick, it needs to be seen. It's the closest thing we've come to any of his work since he's passed. I think it's also very important to stress, don't watch this with advert breaks. Don't get it getting up to get a drink halfway through. Once you start it, you stay seated until the end. You need to watch it in its entirety without any gaps or interruptions because if you lose any train of thought, then I think that will take something away from the film. It needs to be seen in one sitting. It's very rare that I watch a film and it stays with me for days afterwards because it's freaked me out so much. It's easily the best film that I've seen in recent months. I think you all need to go and watch it. Check it out. Let me know how you found it as well. Did it freak you out? What films would you compare it to? Subscribe at the bottom. Check out our podcast, which is on iTunes and Tumblr. And also you can find us on Twitter, which is at Film Book Club and Facebook. We are facebook.com forward slash the Film Book Club. Thanks. I've been Gary and I'll see you soon. <laughs>